Hey guys, sorry about the uh, sound quality. Uh, I'm recording this on my tablet, so it's um, a little bit crappy, but hopefully you get the sense of uh, what I'm doing. So anyways, I've, I've taken on a new hobby over the past uh, couple of days, and that's to learn the Python programming language. And I have to say, it's pretty awesome. Um, based on the way that Python is set up, you can get a lot done with very minimal code. So one of the first things I did uh, for a project I'm playing around with is to write a stock charting program uh, because my old charting program called Visual Market is no longer uh, being supported and it just doesn't work anymore. I don't have the source code to that thing, so I don't know if I can go in and fix it. So I figure I should just uh, do my own. Um, basically, Here's the entire code to my program. It's about 620 odd lines or something like that. And it has database support, uh, an offline mode, as well as uh, integrating with Yahoo Finance for all of the price data. And basically what I do with this is uh, I can calculate a lot of my own indicators like MACD, RSI, and what have you, and kind of just chart it for whatever I'm, I'm tracking at the time. So this is the main interface of the program, and uh, most of it is taken up by this blank black area. That That's where the chart's going to go. Uh, but basically what you do is you just put in a, a stock ticker symbol that you want to see the chart of, and it'll go and retrieve the data from the database um, and displays the chart. So this is what it looks like. I'm still playing around with it. Um, I feel like I have to add a legend to describe what these moving averages are, and maybe tweak some of the colorings for these indicators a bit. But most of it is here, so um, it works It works really well. I can zoom in um, and see something in, in greater detail if I want to. Um, I can save the picture as a JPEG or a PMG to use in whatever else I have for it. Um, right now in my database, I have about, I don't know, maybe 20 um, stocks or so. So you can see that if I'm pulling up something that's in the database, it does it pretty quickly. I mean, there's a lot of data. Uh, it goes back, you know, a couple of years for each each stock. There's one day data and five minute data. Um, but if I put in something like AXP, which is American Express, and it's not in the database, it'll give me a little uh, pop-up that basically says it's not in the database and if I want to go out and download the data for it. And uh, if I say yes, it'll go to uh, Yahoo Finance and use that API and pull uh, three years worth of one day price data and uh, also five minute data and stores it into the database and then uh, builds the chart off of that. So if I say yes, and it's gonna take a little bit of time, it's gonna go out, uh, basically query Yahoo and uh, dumps the data into the database. Um, and once it's there, it's going to pop the chart back up and show us the new uh, uh, chart for American Express. So uh, depending on the connection that you have, it could go pretty quickly or it could go uh, uh, a little bit slow. So I'm on a somewhat slower connection, so you can see that it takes a little bit of time, but it's not too bad. And it only happens when you have something that's not in the uh, database already. So here is American Express Company Common Stock, and you can see that that's what it is. If I put in something else like Microsoft um, that I know is in my database, it comes up um, pretty quickly. Um, so that's pretty cool. The other thing I can do is I can update the stock prices. And basically, it just goes out to Yahoo again and updates um, all of the one-day price data and all of the five-minute um, price data uh, and does it pretty pretty quickly for you know roughly 20 or so issues that I have in there. But you can see that this is my database back end. Um, and right now I have, I don't even have 20, I have 17 uh, companies that I'm tracking. But uh, if I want to interface directly with the price data, export it to something else or do whatever I want with it, um, I can access it directly. So for example, if I want to see the list of companies um, that are in my database uh, just for whatever reason, 
I do this. And if I execute it, it basically just gives me a list of all of the companies, just like in that table. So obviously I can restrict it by almost any criteria that I want to. Um, but, but that's basically the, the whole program um, in a nutshell. So right now you can see that the program is saying it's not responding, but that's because in the background it's downloading and checking uh, all of the price data for all those issues that are in my database. Um, I did put in like a one second, oh, it's done. I did put in like a one second sleep in between each data pool. And I may take that out. I'm just trying to be respectful of the, uh, the Yahoo data. I don't want to just hit it all the time for massive amounts of data. But um, since I'm pulling one day and five minute data, that's two pulls per issue. And if I have 17 stocks, that means that it's at least 34 seconds of wait time aside from the time to download the data. So I may take the wait out um, just because Yahoo is big, big and they can support, uh, I'm sure they can support massive data pulls and I'm frankly not pulling all that much. But uh, once it's done, it just gives me that message, tells me that it's uh, all updated. And it's smart enough to know that it only updates price data that is not already in the database. So. For now, this is all it does. Um, I think it's pretty cool. If you're nice to me, I may share. Um, but basically, my goal for this is to have my own charting program that kind of replace what uh, I had in a program that's no longer working. And going forward, I may play around with like different trade models. And uh, since I'm building this database, I may just do some back testing of um, certain trade algorithms and things like that, just just for the hell of it. Anyways, I hope you find this useful and let me know if you have any questions.